Good afternoon, everyone. Hello. Hello. Hello, can you guys hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Apparently, I cannot hear you guys. Let's see. All right, I think I can hear you. Maybe now. Yep. Your guess, can you hear us? Hey, Penos, how are you, man? Fine. Happy New Year. Fine. Happy New Year to you, too. Yeah, I can hear you now. I think uh, my headset was messed up. And uh, last week, I was not uh, able to speak much. My voice was messed up. So, <laughs> Happy New Year, everyone. Uh, Happy New Year. Let's give folks a couple of minutes, I think, that transition from the other meeting here, uh, which is, it should be Anil and Rama and Drew, and maybe Vilas. Andrew, I will ask. Uh, hey, sorry, I'm late. I know you guys are transitioning from the meeting, so <laughs> let's uh, give another That's minute right. to Anil and Rama, and then we can get started. Sounds good. So I think um, while we are waiting, Drew, I think uh, we uh, we want to continue with the spreadsheet today. I think last week uh, yeah. we spent uh, much of time on kind of level setting. Yeah, uh, yeah. And I, 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 sorry about that. I, I wanted to do it just to catch. I think I felt like there's some folks that were catching up that were gone when we started all this. So thank you for your patience. No, I, I think it was good. I think it's good to to kind of have those kind of uh, alignments, especially since we met after some time. So that's that's all great. Um, uh, who's going to be sharing today? Is it going to be you, Drew, or Erwin? I was thinking it would be Erwin, if you don't, because you know Erwin is the expert. So I was thinking, Erwin, if you don't mind sharing, uh, and then we can make edits as we go. Are there any, is that okay with folks? Yeah, I mean, everyone can access that uh, OCP shared file uh, uh, spreadsheet, I think at this point, right? Uh, so we should be uh, we should be able to access it uh, while Arvind is sharing it. Okay, it can is. Can you guys see my screen? Shared. Yeah, 
Uh, before you get started, let's uh, now that uh, Rama is also here, I uh, see Shubhda and others. Any opens or anything that anyone wants to bring up before we get, um, uh, jump into the PCI uh, error handling pen points? Uh, no, thank you. I missed the last week meeting due to Thank you. I think a little bit with the truth. All right. Happy New Year, Rama, since you missed yeah. last week. <laughs> Happy New Year, you and all. So, um, I was reminded today that we meet once a week and that there's only 52 weeks in a year. So we need to speed up. <laughs> <laughs> and so, yeah, if we wanted to, um, but we have to go through some things to make sure that we're all on the same page with what the error is. Um, and so uh, last several meetings, you know, like we, we've only talked about one error, right? <laughs> After all, all these weeks, we only talk about one error. That's a daily error. Yeah, but, we're only trying to clean up 10 years of PCIE. So, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, what I was thinking was maybe uh, 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 how, uh, how, how you have these errors. Are we going serially or do we have a priority uh, uh, column somewhere? That might be a good uh, exercise to do. Yeah, there, there, there is, and I think we can organically figure that out a little bit because a lot of it is at the end is kind of the same, and then some of them is I think we could come back and do a presentation of of what the solution is because I think it's less controversial and, and save time versus uh, having a group group one. Um, I think I like the priority. I think we should go fatals first, non fatal correctable. That kind of is. Well, the, the, the problem is, uh, like, like, if I have to vote as to where the biggest problems are, yeah. I would say you are, you know, and advise yeah, me not probably to. Probably it's uh, somewhere in between A and F, which is yeah. neither, neither <laughs> fatal nor. Yeah. 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 I think surprise link downs also other big, one of the big problems. Yeah. Well, so, yeah, so the, we're, we're on the edge of about to talk to ANF. It is, it is, I think, I talked to several of you, it is probably the biggest pain point uh, together. Um, so if we, um, but my suggestion was that, you know, we, we talked about DLP. The DOP error itself isn't that interesting. The the DOP was a result of saying uh, jumping boat to talk about ETPC and that um, to remind people and also to lead to another pain point that when when the endpoint sees the DPC, um, it just sends the error fatal message to root port, uh, and so what. I wanted to add, I, I, you know, instead of just, I wanted to move a little bit to, um, instead of just talk about what, you know, we kind of understand what the problem is, let's make sure we capture what the pain point is and what, what we want to work on um, and accomplish, uh, you know, I guess for the year. So, uh, so a proposal, uh, Erwin, let's, uh, I think if we can determine what the settings are, that we want for AER initially, that can be kind of a starting point. What do these errors mean and how do we want to configure you know, the, the AER settings in the hierarchy? And then we can start the bridge spec lit working on improving the telemetry and, uh, and standardizing how cards behave. But, but if I have these settings, we can then propose some AER driver changes to the Linux kernel that we're about to bring to this group and we can incorporate your settings into those drivers. Yeah. Uh, let me see. So, so it almost me... sounds like we should just talk about advising on fatal. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but uh, well, hang on. I, I just want to make sure I understood what Drew was proposing. Because what I heard was he wants to essentially define 
the settings that we would use today without any changes? Well, the, I, I think, Mark, what I would like is, I don't think that's possible because I think that uh, PCIe devices implement the spec inconsistently due to the ambiguities. So in the short term, we should say, here's how we should nominally set things up most of the time. And then what Google's proposing is an AER driver that enforces those settings, but also allows hot patching the OS so that if we find a device where the settings aren't right, we can easily alter them for a particular device that behaves uh, out of our desired behavior. And once we know what we want, then what we can do is start writing a PCIe bridge spec that specifies how we want things to behave and we can make our settings normative. Yeah, just to add to uh, uh, to uh, to what uh, uh, is discussed and uh, to level set uh, what the process for this particular piece of uh, pain point handling, uh, I, I think we all uh, uh, should agree upon is that we are bringing together all our pain points in PCIe. We are listing them out. We are uh, working together on defining what could be a good configuration for different modes of handling for maybe different for, uh, you know, uh, from your first or OS native or out of band. And then we are agreeing upon what changes we want to bring, uh, uh, bring uh, out or request in various uh, specs, which could be PCI spec, which could be a CPI, which could be uh, something else I do not know. So that's kind of the process we want to go through. Do, do we all agree on that? Sounds or, good to me. Or, yeah, if there are any oppositions to that or modifications to, in the process, let's discuss it now. Yeah, so I'm, the idea is, I don't think I'm opposed. I would just say, I think I would be shocked if the baseline is different between the three modes you described, right? I, I think we have three, you know, entities here that want to run in different, you know, handling uh, configurations. But ultimately, I think the base is, should be the same. I don't see that there would be any difference. At least I hope there wouldn't be. I, I think right now we, cards are kind of inconsistent and we have to do funky things for certain cards, but I, I'm with you, Mark. I'm 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 hoping that uh, that as we nail this, we can make it pretty consistent. I, I'm yeah, with and, you. And and, I, and ultimately, look, we 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 know there's always going to be outliers, and I I would prefer not to have them in the baseline. You know, the exactly. idea is, yeah, 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 just define the baseline, and then we can say, look, sometimes there's cards that misbehave and. You know, may, you know, at that point, we can, you know, maybe have some inclusion of how we deal with some of those other cards. But if, but if we just focus on the baseline itself, I'm, you know, I really, I, I honestly think we could all agree. Yeah, yeah. I, I hope that too, Mark. Uh, totally with you on that. Oh, I think you're right. And Mark, what I was thinking is that this is where the bridge spec comes in is that there's ambiguity and as we figure out like what we want then we go tell everyone what we want and we, we we clear up the ambiguity in the bridge spec so that we can say for data center systems we want you to follow the pcie bridge spec and it will specify card behavior that matches what we come up with here so that if you follow that spec we don't have to special case anything you know it will work without change Yeah, I, so I, I had a good conversation with Erwin yesterday. I, you know, I think a bridge spec is is uh, definitely, uh, I'll say aggressive. Uh, it will be, uh, it, it, the implications of a bridge spec, I think, are just, you know, impossible to comprehend because ultimately it's going to be impacting devices, the spec, and, uh you know, ultimately desired behavior. Um, that part of it, I think we're going to have you know, much more uh, difficult lift on. But 
but ultimately, if we just put in, you know, Irwin spec and, you know, defined, you know, let's say put in a root port, are, are we just talking about AER? Uh, I believe that we are not. Like, like for instance, um, there is wiggle room in DPC so that we can't make DPC uh, like normal behavior. Um, because it's it's not implemented consistently, so so there'll be some other things in addition to these settings that we have to sort out that would that we were thinking went into the bridge spec, and and I agree it's it's aggressive and we may have to have other avenues to do it short term, but uh, if we don't try, we're certain not to get it. If we try, we might get it. So hang on, uh, Drew, I have a question. I, um, when you say there's wiggle room in DPC, I mean I'm well aware. The DPC was implemented inconsistently across the industry, right? But I don't, I mean, for the most part, I'm not sure that that was wiggle room in the spec. It was, you know, specific hardware bugs or whatever, right? So is there like, can you just, just help me out? Is there some specific thing you're talking about in the DPC spec that like, hey, here's the, something that's ambiguous and got implemented, you know, inconsistently? Yeah. Uh, what do you do with uh, transactions that are in flight when DPC is invoked? At the root Drop part? them. Drop them. Yeah, uh, drop but, them. But, you, but you can't because you'll lose credit. So you have to you have to do it in a way that, that you can continue to make forward progress. Correct. Yeah, I agree with that. But but ultimately, I think the spec defines the proper behavior. That's right. You know, responses can be poison or you know, you ours and anything incoming gets dropped and, and yeah, yeah. I, I agree with all that, but, but, proper but, but behavior, but it wasn't implemented that way everywhere. And, uh, and why was that? I think there was some ambiguity. Yeah. I don't know that that's true. So I think, I'm, I think what we are doing right now, unless that's a good point and true. Uh, and Mark also, I think what we are doing right now is, is the exercise we want to do about all of these line items. DPC is one of them. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, and I think there there uh, there are cases where there are genuine uh, fixes that can be brought into a spec, and there are cases yeah. where uh, understanding or implementation details need to be added. So I think uh, yeah. let's uh, agree on that and move on, right? Yeah, I, I mean, I, I was just trying to get like a, you know. No, I understand. I think I think this is not the first time I've I've heard people challenging DPC and asking the and hearing the other party what specifically you're talking about. So this is not the not the first. That's I totally hear you. Yeah, I I DPC is going to be a deep dive. I'm right. I mean, there's there's just an endless number of things we could talk about. Um, but I'm just still at the point of why don't we just start at AER and put in the, you know, the base configuration yep. that we think we should be running at a root port. And for now, just AER. I agree, so, yeah, I agree with Mark. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. I, I think I we can all that. agree on that. I, I mean, I it, it would be quick. I think that's actually the plan. I mean, except it, it may not be, if you look at what Erwin's done, uh, there, there, there may be some. We need. I, I would like to make sure we consider switches. Well, uh, yes, I. But, but the idea is, I'm, you know, this is one of those things. Let's start at a root port. Because that's the basic configuration, and then, yep. and, and then we add to that. I and agree with that too. Yeah, we can put in. I mean, Irwin has a spreadsheet. I swear, we could spend years doing. Right, years, and, and it wouldn't be hard. Sarvin's retirement plan, but Rama has his hand up. <laughs> to... Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, I think uh, like may after the discussion, I have like a general topic. Like, uh, see, uh, I think D DPC one of the critical problem, right? What are the other problems we are trying to standardize? Let's let's prioritize them, and then think uh, touching on the Yogesh previous point. Uh, then maybe we can have like a small, uh, like one or two members to drive that sub failures and come back and that way you can get that faster. Yeah. Yeah. So, 
So Rama, that is, I think, is exactly what I was getting ready to say. Yeah. But I think we're going to have to look at Irwin's spreadsheet, pick off, you know, essentially identify each of the individual items that needs discussion yeah. and then prioritize them. So we, you know, decide essentially how to build on, you know, on what we've already done. Yeah. Uh, DPC, I, I can tell you that I would, uh, you know, it's yeah, one it's, of those topics. It's going to be months. Months. Yeah. Uh, months. Yeah. And, and, and the, for example, DPC, like somebody like taking responsibility one or two engineers, they, they should be like, they come up with a list of things. Hey, these are the existing gaps in the existing standard. These are the top three or four things to address, right? That kind of list we should come up then to work yeah, I think I think that's a, that's a good uh, uh, way to attack it. Uh, let's uh, gather pain points on that. Do we do we do, do we want to uh, start spending some time prioritizing, or do we want to go uh, from top of the list and say, okay, this is not important. Uh, how do you want to go about this today? I would suggest just start at the top. Let's go down. Yeah. Let's see how it goes. Yes. You know. Okay. Then. Yeah. Yeah, we need to make progress on the sheet. So I agree with yep. you, us. And to Mark's point, let's just focus on column H. Right. Column H. Okay, so column H um, was, you know, um, uh, to recap, like for instance, when we talk about DLP errors, we said, hey, DPC it uh, via uncorrectable error. Oh, I'm I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm can can you oh, you guys or whoever's sharing? Can we see uh, B through through E as well? Because I think there's yeah. yeah yeah yeah. Here we go. Okay, sorry. Thanks. Yeah, no problem. Um, there's many ways to handle right. You could hack the system and, yeah. and oh, but we had to start somewhere. So I I uh, at the beginning to get the discussion going, uh, this is why we end up with saying, okay, with the link for require, we we with DPC. And um, everyone thinks, since yeah, DPC is yeah. not universally usable, can we have like a if DPC works answer and a if DPC isn't working answer? Uh, yeah, we can start doing that. Like uh, one, Erwin, one question is on the column H, what we are saying is if this error happens, what are the uh, resilience or containment techniques we are using? Is that is the goal for column H? What is the goal for column H? Uh, let me see. I think it says suggested hardware behavior when detected yeah. by, and if it is okay. detected by root port, what's the behavior? Okay. Suggested yeah. hardware behavior. This but, desired uh, behavior is what I thought it was, but yeah. Yeah, yeah, I forgot we had a title. <laughs> So just hard to hear from detect by different. Uh... So so uh, uh, Drew, I don't know if I fully understand when you said DPC works and DPC doesn't work. What what, what you're trying to say enabled or you're trying to say uh, it's enabled but it has no impact on this particular. Well, let's let's say if DPC. Better. How about this? If DPC can be enabled, we use DPC. If DPC for some reason cannot be enabled, here's what we should do. Yeah, like what what is that Yogesh is like for example if you have a accelerate kind of device, right? The DPC workflows may not work end to end because there is a workload running on that accelerator. Okay. Uh, like uh, if, if if some devices right, like say SSD, implementing DPC post is easy. Okay, some devices are difficult. Uh, what what is the action if DPC cannot be done for that particular device? I know we are talking about root port here, but depends on what is connected to the root port. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, Rama, but is it me or is Rama breaking up? Yeah, Rama is breaking, breaking up. up. Breaking up. Breaking up. Yeah. yeah, we're oh, having uh, a hard time hearing you, Rama. Oh, sorry. Yeah. What uh, I meant is, can you hear me now? Yeah. yeah. Much okay. better. Uh, what what I meant is for at the root port you may have like multiple PCI device types connected. Okay, some devices like SSD is doing a end-to-end -end DPC flow uh, is like working and people use it. But 
doing a DPC flow end to end for accelerator kind of device. Uh, this not industry is not ready. And it cannot be possible. Uh, like if we cannot do it, what is the handling we should do? If not DPC is not possible. I'm just trying to support what do was. Yeah. Said. Yeah, but we have root ports that don't support yes. DPC, and we have drivers that do not support DPC. So if we find ourselves in that situation, what should we do? Yes. Oh, I see. So you want uh, two recommendations, yeah, I, one I, with DPC and one if if that recommendation is not possible, what's the alternate? Yeah, yeah. is yeah. it service, but, service action or what is that? Yeah, I think I would go the other direction, though, because I think what Rama is implying is, you know, what you really want is DPC on a switch that has no other devices dependent. It needs to be isolated so that if we have a driver, if we have a device and they all support, then it can be enabled and isolated. If you have a root port and, you know, as Rama described, there's five devices attached and some of them don't support yeah. DPC, then you're kind of in a predicament, right? Well, well, and, and Mark, this is why we can we can talk about it a little bit later, but like for Google, we have tons of switches yeah. and we would probably trigger DPC as far downstream as possible so that we chop as little off from the system yeah. as possible. Hey, hey, but, hey guys, absolutely. hey guys, sorry, sorry to cut you off, but we said we weren't going to talk about DPC, and now we're talking about DPC again. Yeah, I think, Can we I actually think I, figure out a way to just, you know, put the DPC part out of it? I think it was my fault, Vilas. Yeah. I think I questioned, <laughs> but I think I, what I was yeah. going to say was, yes, let's agree and start making progress. We'll figure it out along the way. Right. So so let me, let me just maybe ask some questions, right? PCIe default severity, fatal. We all agree that that's the right thing to do for this one? I do. Yeah. Yes. OK, great. And then, I mean, the root port handling without DPC, I mean, it's essentially, you know, let's just write down AER fatal error handling and we can come back and if, if needed to define that better. Yeah. I'm talking about row seven DLP, right? I'm talking about row seven column each, yeah, right. Okay. So, so we use DPC if we can, otherwise we go through the, the fatal error handling. Yeah. Sounds good. Otherwise, AER fatal error handling. And I guess, Erwin, you, it says DPC via uncorrectable error here, and then the next it says via error fatal. Can we just be consistent? Because I would think this would be DPC via error fatal as well. Sorry, say that again? In no, row I eight. Think, I think what he meant there is, Vilas, yeah. if root port has detected it, then it would not be uh, error fatal, right? Well, well, we're talking about root port in all cases here, right? So so in the in the... In row eight, column H, it says DPC via error underscore fatal, right? So error underscore fatal is the, the BCIE, you know, message terminology, yeah. right? In H7, it says DPC via uncorrectable error. And I guess I, my question is actually, did you mean to make a difference there? Or is it, you know? Oh, yeah, there's a mistake. Right? This should be uncorrectable error. Okay, thanks. Yeah, okay, thank you. Yeah. And, okay. So, all right. So, are we, are we done with uh, seven? Because then eight actually we went to eight, and eight actually, I, I don't think anybody, I think severity of fatal, that, that actually worth some discussion. Um, so, so, one suggestion if we are not going to populate or do anything on columns I and J, maybe you should hide it for now so people don't keep getting distracted by those. I don't yeah. think that's a problem right now. It's you. Yeah. 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 So like, I'm, I'm really not bought into leaving the switch out of the discussion yet. So, but I'm I'm willing to suspend disbelief. But can we just go through H and leave the others? Yeah. Yeah. Let's do the H first. Yeah. So yeah. So to your Erwin, fatal. I don't see how to make surprise down non-fatal. Let me maybe say it that way. Well, so the 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 reason is that. Um, it depends on how you differentiate between handling a fatal and non-fatal error. A yeah. surprise down, by definition, you achieve containment. <laughs> that's fair. Yeah, yeah, that's fair. Okay, you're, okay. I see what you're saying. You're right. Yeah. That, that's fair. 
what is that what is the term by by definition a surprise down achieves containment yeah and so, so, so yeah go ahead so if you if you have an idle device right um especially and this happens in, in, in data centers where uh, somebody's uh, 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 maybe replacing MEME devices, and um, they, you know, they they they, they uh, correctly quiesce the drivers, but they didn't, you know, do everything through it, and then they pulled out the device by accident. Yeah. What's the harm? Um, well, I think yeah. the harm, Erwin. I agree with you about the containment part of it, but I think the harm is that in the PCIe spec, if the root port is not in DPC and you've gone surprise down and someone sends a transaction to that root port, like there's no requirement that that transaction ever complete. Uh, so, wait, right? there's no... So, so root port's in surprise down, but DPC has not triggered. Ah, right? uh, okay. And you send a trans and the CPU sends the transaction to the root port. There's no requirement that that transaction gets responded to, right? So I think if you treat this as non-fatal, um, you know, you, there's no requirement that. Well, I, I, let me say it differently. In order for the system to survive, guarantee to survive a surprise down, like it actually has to trigger DPC, which means you probably want it to be fatal because you might want to exclude other non-fatal errors from DPC, okay. right? I'm you, you trying to end up hiding these so I can get comments next to <laughs> yeah. uh, hide columns. And so, yeah, okay. So this is a good, this is a, it turned out to be a great one to discuss in terms of like bridge back or PCIe SIG update, right? You, uh, Velis is right. There is no, there's no language that, exp that, that explicitly says that, um, a, a, a completion needs to be uh, sent on a surprise down. So on some implementations, you could end up with um, a, a, a timeout on, on the core side. That's right. And so like you could go one way, which is update the PCIe SIG, which is gonna, you know, we, we know it's gonna take a while. Or if we can have a bridge spec and say, hey, do we follow well, the bridge spec on-, on well. On yeah. Wait, hang on. Putting putting aside the mechanism of how we request an update, let's agree on whether we think that's a good idea. Yeah. Right. So what you're what you're suggesting is that the hardware, if it goes surprise down, should effectively behave like it behaves in DPC. It needs to drop any outstanding transactions and or complete complete any outstanding transactions and new transactions without actually triggering DPC, right? So that's what you're suggesting as an addition to the hardware on a surprise down error. Uh, how right? would that happen? I mean, this is not an orchestrated event, right? It's a surprise event. It's a surprise event. So the root, but but the but if it triggers DPC, like the root port would just say, okay, I'm the link is down and now I've got all these transactions outstanding. I'm, I'm not gonna get any completions back. So I'm gonna dummy complete everything, you know, you are everything back to the to the host and then any writes I'll drop and any new things, it'll it'll do the same thing. In my view, that's exactly what DPC does, right? Yeah. So like adding this in as a spe special requirement for surprise down, I'm not sure that that's a good idea, right? Mm -hmm. I understand the theoretical appeal, yeah. but you know, I don't know that we want like two mechanisms to do the same thing, right? So I, th I think the um, the uh, we'll rat hole into another discussion on PCI Express hot plug. Yep. And then I th it um, I have to look at the spec, but it had always bothered me. I think it had some language like. You don't enable DPC with uh, hot plug. Um, well, with with uh, what's the word surprise? Room, the hell, what the bit? What's the hot plug surprise? Right? Yeah, yeah. DPC and hot plug surprise are mutually exclusive. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, which you know, with with this particular bit. Uh, 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 well, no. So very specifically, the hot plug surprise. Like, if you get a surprise down error, the hot plug surprise mechanism doesn't trigger. Yeah. That, that language is in there. Okay. 
Yeah, I, get, I, I, I don't remember uh, that clear. Uh, clear it's but a, it's it, a it recommendation. Gets, it's a strong yeah. recommendation to not write that. That's the language. Yeah. I believe it's a recommendation to not enable both. It's a yeah. requirement that if a surprise down error occurs, the hot plug surprise mechanism does not trigger. Okay. Right. Yep. Okay. So, so, so but, yes, right. But but I guess my point, like the point of all what I was trying to say, right, is all of that leads me to say that surprise down should be fatal such that you can invoke DPC on it, right? And again, I don't want to rat hole into DPC, but like that's why I'm saying I actually okay. think like the the spec sort of gets to the point where you need to you want this to be fatal. Right? Well, is that the reason you want it to be fatal? Because that is the reason I want it to be fatal. The, uh, are you suggesting that we end up talking about DPC again? <laughs> because uh, um, we could we haven't gotten there, but do we want to trigger DPC on non-fatal events? I, I think that's a policy choice that can be made, yeah. right? And I'm just saying here, I don't think there's a policy choice to be made, right? Like you got to trigger DPC in order to keep the system reliably up, right? Um, and so if there's not a policy choice to be made, you make it fail. Uh, okay, so... Um, uh, um... We talk about this little DPC with uncorrectable error, otherwise fatal error handling. Uh, we talk about severity. Uh, I was saying that do we want to keep it sever uh, severity? The other thing that we we can talk about is is optional. Yep. Is this a requirement? And, and this is something that that definitely would go into the bridge spec uh, because uh, um, you know AER is optional. So yep. hopefully nobody in this <laughs> the, yep. well, nobody in this uh, uh, group is going to say. Hey, I don't want to. I don't want to make that a fee, uh, a request on on the bridge back, for instance. Yeah. I mean, I'd like to hear from the the you know platform vendors, heavy scale is platform vendors. I mean, my view is, yeah, that's essentially a requirement, right? right so I that agree. is the kind of thing we should document. Right? Yeah, I, I agree. Okay, so. Let me see how I'm gonna do this. So I'm gonna I think I'm gonna put it here. One well, is updating one question. I know we are starting with Excel. Like, what is the plan converting as this as a like a deliverable? Right? Should we move into like a Word document after first revision of Excel? Yeah. So Rama, I think this is what I was trying to say earlier. I I would suggest we stay with this. And once we have a sense of like what actually we want to do in terms of a okay. deliverable, then we'll know how to like create it, okay. right? Okay. Yeah. Exactly. Right? And that's kind of why I'm trying to be like, hey, bridge spec, maybe, maybe not. Like, what? Like, I think it's fine. Just you know, Erwin's just writing down like, here are the things that we actually want to write down, right? Yep. Well, as an example, like, I don't think we would ever. I don't think there's any world in which we would make. Well, I don't say that. Like, maybe we go to PCI SIG and say, make the surprise down error required at the root port, but I think a better way of doing it would be to find some way to have a profile or something like that that says, hey, for data setting use cases, this is a return, right? But but we can figure that out once we know a little more about like what we're actually gonna spec, right? What does the bridge spec is going to provide? Well, that's the point, right? Like it's you know, presumably it'll just say, here are the things we want to change. Maybe they're all things we just handle with PCI SIG. I don't know, right? Uh, exactly. Maybe yeah. there's an OC, you know, we can create an OCP document that's a mission profile or something for, you know, data center, PCIe configuration and data center and just say here. Oh. Right? But like, you know, just like for now, let's just note down the things we actually want to put in it and then we can figure that out, right? And, and Mama, I'm, I'm like, I'm 90% sure we need something that says, here's what we want from PCI in the data center. Yes, but I'm, yes. I'm open to suspending my disbelief on the bridge. I need, I think we need the bridge spec, but I'll suspend my disbelief. Let's just document what we want to do. And I'm, I'm fine with figuring it out later, but, but, but I think we'll need it in the end. Yeah. Yeah. Is a bridge spec spot. Sorry. Is that our deliverable? Like, uh, 
it will be something we contribute to. We will contribute. Yeah, most likely, yes, Rama. Most likely, yeah. yes. But let's let's uh, wait uh, maybe another couple of meetings before we yeah. jump to that conclusion. Yeah. Okay. And the other added that otherwise pay to error handling, and um, especially with this comment about how they can end up with a core timeout. Um, I don't know how to put that in here, but. For instance, the current Linux, one of the things that we really want to work on is updating the Linux driver. Um, the Linux driver right now sees a fatal error. Uh, actually, for any fatal or non-fatal, what we'll try to do is re quote unquote recover, which is basically by issuing FLR, which is really not going to help on a surprise down. And then continue on. Um, no ifs, no buts, just continue on. So even if FLR has failed or FLR doesn't make sense, it will still continue. So the system will stay up. The system may stay up. Yeah, uh, well, <laughs> it'll stay up it's... until another error comes in and then bring the system hard down. Well, no, no, no. I mean, sorry. If Are you saying if DPC is triggered or if DPC is not triggered, this it'll it'll continue? Well, Either on, way, on, right? On DPC triggering, we won't see it. It will look like a correctable error to the yeah. Linux. So without yeah. DPC, I was talking about the otherwise uh, fatal yeah. error handling. And, and all, all I'm saying is, in that case, there's a risk of a hang, right? Yeah. Yep. Uh, well, that's actually not the biggest risk. The risk is that the system actually continues and stays up, and you don't know what the driver is doing at that point. That's fair. <laughs> that's the second risk. You're right. Okay. That's what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, that's a good point. Okay. So, I mean, what, what you're saying is, hey, you know, Linux could be optimized to have special handling for a surprise down. Like, don't try and keep the device up. Yeah. So, right now, Linux handles errors in three big buckets. Correctable, yeah. non-fatal, and fair. Actually, two big buckets. Correctable and uncorrectable. And that's it. Um, yep. And that, that, sorry, I have a segue because I keep forgetting to bring this up and I apologize. Um, so around the same time we started just talking about this, um, Drew, um, a group of engineers in Intel decided to go and try to update Linux driver to handle advisory non-fatal correctly. Oh, wow. And so... I call it a stepping stone. It does a much better job. Um, it does with what the spec has today. So to to give everybody a background, uh, on advisory non-fatal error, uh, uncorrectable error show is get reported as a correctable error. And on Linux, the error handling is, I see a correctable error. I will look at the correctable error status. I will clear the advisory non-fatal error. Period. It does not look or clear the uncorrectable error status at all, um, and so uh, that that we're trying to fix. Uh, code review is uh, over the over the break, kind of uh, ramped up, so we may see some patch review requests on the Linux forums soon. When that happens, could uh, could you l l let us know here? Yeah, definitely. Uh, and Erwin, that's because Linux sees the core error received bit set, and it doesn't see the uncore error received bit set, and so it only goes and looks at the corrected error status register, right? Right, because I think the person who wrote it didn't quite understand advisory non-fatal was supposed to look at the uncorrected error status. <laughs> I don't blame them, but okay, yeah, I got it. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I understand. Thanks. Yeah. Uh, like, uh, can we? Yeah. Wait, wait, can hang we on, get so, the so, list of yeah. list of uh, like improvement plan? Like. Right. So, so Arvind, I think one one thing we should jot down somewhere here. I mean, one thing we just talked about was one suggestion is, hey, have go have add some special surprise down handling to the operating system so it doesn't try and, you know 
Yeah, right. that's what I said. I didn't know how to. I don't know if I create another column because this is Linux specific. Just to right? add to yeah. just add to the first column in a different uh, color than bridge spec. Just another recommendation there, right? Yep. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah. And I'm gonna make it kind of generic. Yeah. Uh, improve because the uh uh. uh it is um, because of the, the the way the Linux does it today. Like if if, if I had to re had an opportunity to rewrite Linux, I would base my error decision on the error bit scene, not on the giant. It was it a non fatal afraid or correctable error? Yeah. the The one thing we got to be really careful about with that, Erwin. Right. Um, part of the reason it doesn't do that is it is possible for interrupts to coalesce or be yes. dropped. Right. And so the like actual status of the uncorrect, the actual like state of the uncorrectable error status register that Linux sees is not necessarily reflective of like the full error status. A anyway, I'm just saying like I think there's actually a reason they do it that way. So you know, it's worth looking into and seeing if there's a way to, to solve that. But, you know, just I want to I want everyone to point out, like, there, there are actual solid, valid reasons why they do some of this, right? More generic. And it's a uh, yeah, it's it's the it's the whole race condition yeah. uh, issues. Uh, and advising on fatal is the worst of it. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yep. OK. All right. Well, actually, actually, I mean, yeah, hang on, right? I mean, part of the, I, I think the race condition primarily stems from the the core error received and like it's it's those bits in the interrupt hierarchy, right? Uh, um, well, we should, anyway, we should just think about it, right? Like there might be, there might be hardware changes we could make to make those race conditions like better and then corresponding software changes, right? Yeah. Um, uh, Early in this message, yeah. we talked about queues. And uh, for instance, in the internal error ECR, I had a queue suggestion. Uh, and that, uh, I, I wrote that, by the way. And that, that it was to solve this problem. Uh, it was an expensive solve, but yeah. it was to solve that problem. Yeah. So we can. Let me make one more, but I'm going to skip this. I'm going to go to CTO because I think this is the last one. Because I, I want to talk about this one in particular because I think this is an interesting bridge spec uh, discussion. So, okay, so we all know CTO. CTO um, no, is, is a completion timeout on a non posted request. And the reason, oh, the reason this one is this long is because I, I wrote. I had a piece on the fact that um, that uh, uh, on a CTO, the device should not reuse the transaction ID tag uh, because the there, there could be a circumstance um, where um, before, or maybe I, I need to back up a little bit. So a completion timeout occur, uh, occurs detected because on a, on a request, there's a transaction ID tag that's used to match up with completion that sends it back with the same transaction ID tag. So that's how you uh, that's how you, you match up the request with the completion. When a CTO occurs, um, that means the completion didn't arrive back to the device on time. And um, what the, at minimum, what the device does is on a scoreboard mark out that hey okay that transaction ID is now freed um, and and I, I, I'm using the word free in quotes here the the problem is that um, the completion may come really late and so if it did and the scoreboard still had marked the transaction ID tag as free. Uh, that's how you're going to get a unexpected completion error uh, it's later on in the in the er errors here. The 
the problem with the the spec is that it does not explicitly tell you that that transaction ID needs to be permanently retired. And so a lot of devices, a lot of vendors actually reuse the transaction ID. So in the scenario that I talked about, you send a transact non post request out, it times out, right? And so you put that transaction ID back in a free list and then you reuse it and everything happens to line up. It was another request using the same transaction ID, but the old completion, a completion from using the original request came back really late and got matched with the second re, uh, request that was sent using the same transaction ID, causing definitely a um, data corruption scenario. So if, you know, just for the sake of conversation, if you buy what I'm saying that, that this, is a, this is an issue, right, then um, this is like one of the things that we want to talk about that, that we want to have this behavior explicitive. Don't reuse transaction ID. Uh, and this is especially, and I always thought this was dangerous to do, but this is especially um, important for devices that will downgrade completion timeout errors to advisory non-fatal, because uh, that, that is an option. Um, but in, in that case, right, then you're going to get a correctable error. The system is more likely than ever going to stay up. And uh, you'll be more more prone to having that uh, race condition issue that I described. Yeah, Erin. I mean, I buy what you're saying, but it's not forever, right? It's actually just until the next device reset. Yes. Uh, no. Yeah. Definitely. Until the next device reset. Yeah. Yeah. yeah well, like, yeah. A, but like a, but like a, whatever, a hot reset or a, you know, VF, a PFFLR, like any of those, right? Yeah. Any of those. Yep. Yeah. Or a link down, for that matter, right? Like, so, like, as an example, if CTO, but like, yeah, any any of those things would would clear up this. So, okay. Yeah. Yeah, but I think I, I agree with you. I think that's a good thing. Can you, yeah, maybe put it in column A. Like, that's a good thing to get, you know, put in a requirement, right? And, like, that's the kind of thing that I actually think ought to go in, like, the PCIe SIG, the PCIe spec, right? Because it's not, like, recommended configuration. It's, like, a hardware behavior in the root port. Agree, but yeah. It, you know, yeah. But but anyway, we can you know figure that out later, right? So. Yeah, yeah another thing. Well, and, and maybe we make some things mandatory. You know, like there may be some things we want for data center usage that we want mandatory. Um, maybe we put that in the PCI spec and have a section that specifies that, or maybe we have a separate spec. Yeah. I was yeah. Whatever. Say, I, uh, just but, just add another so, line. Uh, uh, submit ECR for this change yeah. also. Something yeah, like so Erwin, I would call that a bug, right? I would I'm, call it a bug too, but in I'm, I, people and who read the spec very clearly, they they always argue back with me. Hey, it's not. No, I, I'm going to disagree because here's what I expect. Um, if I send a request and the request times out, then I you know I have a completion timeout. Now. If the request then arrives later, right? And it, as you described, it, it it you know it's it's basically arriving after the device has timed out the request. Then it's an unexpected completion, and it has to be, right? So so the idea is, you you will often see both of those events together, and. The problem is that if you reuse the ID, you will lose the unexpected completion. There yes. won't be a yeah. report of, you know, the yeah. fact that you received the, the completion because you're reusing the ID. So, so that's, I, 
to me, that's what makes it a bug and, and, you know, and a spec violation. Yeah, but it actually risks data corruption. Yes. Right? Yeah, no, no doubt. Yeah. And, and yeah, the, the, the idea is it, it, would, it would just be, you know, a, well, a bug, <laughs> you know, yeah, for yeah. me. Well, yeah. but to me, it's a spec bug, right? Like this is the kind of thing that every piece of hardware that implements a CTO should do. And therefore, I really ought to be explicit in the PCA spec, right? Yeah. Yeah, no argument. Yeah. And that's why we were using the term ambiguity at the beginning. Yep. So, yep. No, I completely look, agree with this one. Yeah. yeah. So. Another another one uh, that um, we can add is that um, I forgot what PCI Express version, but it made logging the requesting TLP optional for CTOs. Yep. And I would like to propose making that not optional yeah, a requirement. I, I mean, again, I don't know if that's a PCA spec change or a bridge spec thing, but yeah, definitely throw it in red in, in column A because I, I agree with you. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, what did I do? TLP under fired. Yeah, and then we won't have to have ever have the issue where you get a completion timeout and uh, uh, unexpected completion, <laughs> and uh, because the CTO occurred first, it locked up the header logs, and the unexpected completion gets not no header logs. All that all that fun stuff. All right, uh, let me see. Uh, is this correctable? And I was saying uh, in this one, we have to talk about because so, it so, can so be Irwin, downgraded. Erwin? Yes. I, I would say go back to the example that you just gave there, right? If I have a CTO and an unexpected completion, which header log do I want? You want the CTO. It, the, the CTO and the and the unexpected completion are essentially one and the same, are they not? One would be a completion. Yeah, but 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 the problem is the unexpected completion, the like the root port doesn't have all the information it needs, right? No, but it needs. So the idea is, I, I this is one of those things where I would almost want to have the, you know, the unexpected completion. No, because, because when I see that, if I have the header, I will know what the request was, you know, and I will know that it timed out, you know, whatever timer that device is using and, mm -hmm. and, and ultimately, you know, can I get that from the CTO? You know, you, you actually CTO. got that backwards, Mark, on a, on a, a unexpected completion, the completer completion TLP is logged. And that really doesn't tell you any information except the tag ID. What you oh, really no. is- it should, the, it should show me the address. No, not a completion. Oh. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah, no, then it's that's useless. What I'm yeah. The, yeah, it's the useless. Report, the, root, the report doesn't have that information, right? So, yeah. You, yeah, you want the CTO. The CTO uh, will, will have the address, but- That's right. But but ultimately, you you won't know that there was actually a timeout in, on the request uh, unless you see the the unexpected completion that matches the CTO. Well, in my dream, the hardware would remember that this was something that previously timed out. So hey, I finally got the answer. Well, well, well hold on, I'm Mark. I'm not I'm not following you. Right? The CTO says that there was a timeout. The unexpected completion will additionally tell you whether the completion eventually came back or not, but that's all right. that unexpected completion tells you, right? That's well, that's right. But the idea okay. is, if I see those two together, yeah. then what what it implies is that you know essentially the CTO timed out against the device's uh, timer. That's yes. Right. Yep. 
but I think the header log wants to be with the CTO, like for the case, you know, for debugging purposes, and then you get a second error that says unexpected completion, right? Yeah, yeah, but, agreed. But I mean, if you got the header well, for both, both of them, couldn't you say, oh, I got this unexpected completion, but it's that. It's the, I recognize the, the transaction ID is that one that timed out. Well, because you can only log one header with that, unless you end up implementing queues. Oh, I see. I'm only logging and clearing because it came back later, but you're right. You're right. I see yeah. your point. Yeah. It, we get one shot. And so we just need to make sure that, you know, whatever we log in the one shot is the one we care about. Yeah, I'm with you. I'm with you. Thanks. All right. All right. Um, any thoughts on um, uh, on uh, uh, um, making uh, uh, da downgrading CTO to advising on fatal? That's only allowed if that device, including the report, but it's really hard for report to do this. Um, to after a timeout to reissue the the request. If that if the device can do that, then the device may downgrade to advisory non fatal. I mean, sure. I don't. I often view that as non practical. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> my 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 only complaint with that is actually with advisory non fatal itself. The way that was well, implemented, but no, uh, no, my no, my complaint's different, right? It's that a transaction got lost somewhere in the system, right? Yeah. There are queues and things that potentially still have that transaction kicking around. If you just be like, oh, I'm gonna go retry this and keep going, like event, like there's a risk that you, that whatever queue got stuck in that trend, wherever that transaction is, like you eventually back up and you get some other completely unrelated error that says, oh, you know, <laughs> this queue backed up and I got a CPU, you know, watchdog timeout or something like that, right? Um, so like, that's my, that's my point about this, right? Is that like, because the rest of the path, wherever that transaction went, we don't know where it went, hasn't been cleaned up. You might just get arbitrary, arbitrary other errors if you treat this as advisory non fatal. Yeah, especially on the report. Yeah. What you said, yeah. Uh, if, if a network device was trying to DMA something and retried, it's less severe. Network? Uh, no, no, no. But if the CTO, it depends on what you mean, right? If this, if the, if the CTO is when the, the the NIC is sending a request into the root port and the NIC that times out, now the root port, the CPU, you know, is in some unknown state. Right. Okay. So is this? I don't think we're going to touch it. It's. I think we kind of looks like we're agreeing that it's, it's impractical, but yeah, not doing anything with it. Okay. Um, Erwin, we're five but, minutes over. Oh, we're we'll look at that. Yeah. <laughs> I knew that we were. I thought we could yeah. sneak one in. <laughs> okay. Time uh, time flies when you're having fun. Thank yeah. you. It was uh, is, good progress today, though. <laughs> yeah, yes, we did. <laughs> I, I, I hope oh, you all. Are. I'm, I'm thrilled. This is exactly what we need to be doing. So thank you. Yeah, yeah. I, I will say I, I think this is really good info. Uh, de definitely uh, could uh, improve the industry if we got all of these things into a, you know, a spec, or or, or even if it was just guidance. It would be major. Yeah. For that. yeah, agreed. So, all right, we're gonna pick up here next week. Great. Okay. All right, okay. everyone. Have a good have weekend, a, everybody. Have a nice, yep. great, uh, long weekend. Uh, see you all next week. Yep. All right. Sounds great. Thank you, everyone.